How are all of you this morning? Today is a very special day for us. We have two events that we're celebrating today. As all of you know, of course, today is D-Day or the celebration of D-Day. And the other is uh, 100 Years of Life for our very own Ruby Green. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> And we'll have more to do with Ruby in a few minutes, but first, Bob Graves is going to come forward and share a few words with us about D-Day and its importance. Bob? Thank you, Carolyn. Uh, Carolyn asked me to make, uh, say a few words uh, about D-Day. Uh, American history teacher for years, and uh, my four <laughs> most famous, I guess, uh, uh, topics in American history start off with the uh, World War One, the twenties, the Great Depression, and then World War Two. So, uh, but uh, today, uh, D-Day is, you know, it's probably the most famous uh, date in World War Two, and there were a lot of famous dates there. But uh, first of all, they say the, uh, and I want to thank Janetta for getting this off the internet for me that the most uh, asked question about D-Day is what's it mean? You know, what's it, uh, what does the D stand for? What does the D stand for? A lot of people think destruction, uh, disaster, death, but they said it just merely stands for day. It just stands for day. And the, the, D, destru the D part of it, D-Day, that can also uh, mean other battles and other wars, you know. So that that uh, for that. Now, uh, just a little about, and I don't want to talk too long, but a little about uh, this uh, D-Day. It was also called Operation Overlord, and it it was planned for months. I mean, it was planned for months, and um, the biggest invasion in U.S. history. 160,000 uh, troops and there were 5,000 ships and 1,300 aircraft. Now think of that. Now you talk about a big event. That, that was a big event. And it was over there on the coast of France, Normandy. And there were, it, it, it was uh, spread out over about 50 miles. And there were five main beaches there. And uh, the United States was involved mainly in Utah and Omaha. And those, and these, by the way, these were code names. And also, uh, Great uh, Britain was mainly gold and sword. And then the Canadians, um, of course, they were another ally there, and uh, theirs was Juno. So those were those. And uh, the United States had that they had to have a perfect. Uh, they had to have good weather on this, so it was postponed at times because the aircraft, if it was cloudy or rainy, you know. So uh, that that was something they had to watch. Uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower was the, he was the supreme commander of all the Allied troops, and then of course, of course, you know later he became uh, president. But uh, this was uh, 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 so important; it was it was concern, considered to be a turning point. And uh, there were now this is just unbelievable here, but there were nine thousand troops. Allied troops either killed or injured. 9,000. They put them on those ships and they had to go into that coastline there and unload them in these boats. And uh, some of these soldiers died in the water because they let them out sometimes too in too deep a water. And, and also, um, they, uh, they had all this equipment and some of them drowned. Now that's a that's a sad thing right there. But but some of them did on that. But uh, 
You know, another thing about this also, most of these soldiers were 18, 19, 20 years old, maybe a few 17. And when they got, when they got into those boats, a big percentage of them knew they were going to die. Now that's a, that's a sad thing to say, but they they were going to die for their country and for their sacrifice. So, but anyway, by the end of the day, um, they said they had established the fact that a hundred thousand troops, uh, Allied troops, could go on into Europe, and uh, I think it was about eleven months later, Germany uh, German. The German surrender. Of course, the D-Day was 1944. Uh, and of course, this day. But uh, anyway, that uh, that's a little bit of information about that. And uh, it it oh one other thing. Uh, I want to thank uh, Ray Freakier for finding this for me. Those that went up those cliffs, you got to remember those Germans were sitting there back there protected by these uh, concrete walls and barbed wire. And they had also, the Germans were mainly looking down on them. And they had to go up those hills and get through that barbed wire and all of that. And you can imagine how tough that was. But uh, Bray said that he found that uh, some of these uh, troops that went up in that uh, particular area were called garbage rangers. So that, that was important. But uh, anyway, that's just a little information about uh, this, and it was a, a very famous uh, event in American history. Do we have any uh, of the uh, World War II veterans here today? Uh, would y'all please stand? Uh, okay, Marshall and uh, anyone else? Okay. And now that we, uh, would all the veterans of all the war stand, we want to give you a big hand too. Let's give them a big hand. Thank, thank you very much. Now, uh, at this time, uh, let's have a, a moment of silence uh, uh, for these veterans. Okay, uh, one thing I forgot to mention, uh, some of you remember Tom Smith. He was a high school math teacher for years up here at the high school. And he was in this battle and was injured. And uh, that he passed away a good many years ago, retired. But I think a lot of you remember him. He was a math teacher up there. <laughs> and uh, I believe that's, uh, believe that's all right now. But uh, uh, thank you, Bob. Yeah. Well, Bob is, is still here. Don't run away. I'd like you to help us to lead happy birthday to Miss Ruby Green. Okay. By, by the way, Ruby, you were born on a very famous date. <laughs> Maybe I should turn that around. <laughs> it was the other way around. <laughs> okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. While Ruby's coming up here, we're glad to have Crispin and June with us today, and JC is with us also. So we're glad to have those children with, with us. 
They're not children anymore, but they are to her. <laughs> okay, we would ask that you continue eating, and, but we're going to uh, continue with the celebration of Ruby's 100 years. And I'd uh, like to begin by sharing some of the events that um, has occurred in those 100 years of Ruby's life because uh, it is quite interesting. First of all, Ruby Smith Green was born in Hale County on June 6, 1919. At the age of three, she moved with her family to Bailey County, and that was in 1922. She met a guy named Lusky, Lusky Green, and while he was uh, while she was in class with his sister at the West Camp School, well, Lusky and Ruby were sort of smitten. Uh, with one another, and at the age of 18, she married Lusky. They lived in uh, Bailey County most of their married life. They only left Milshoe twice. Once was to live a very short time in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and then once in California. And then they moved back and decided that Milshoe was going to be their home. And Ruby and Lusky raised five children, Crispin, Bertha, Charles, Noreen, and Tommy. Ruby was born just a few months after passing of the 18th Amendment, which established prohibition. She was born a few months before the 19th Amendment, which gave women the right to vote. And in doing my research, I really expected to find out that, you know, Ruby probably was born before TV. Well, I was right on that, but what I didn't know, she was also born before radio broadcasting. <laughs> she lived to see the founding of the very first major radio station, and it was called NBC, and we still have it with us today. She was around in the Roaring Twenties, and when the economy collapsed, which was the very beginning of the Great Depression, uh, she was there also. According to Ruby, during the Depression, there was enough food for everyone to eat in our area because of the good neighbors, just as they are today, who shared and helped one another. She did remember that maize heads were the main source of fuel during the Depression, and she told me that when she and Lusky earned 35 cents per hour for chopping cotton, they thought they were in big money. <laughs> Two years after Ruby was born, Harding became the 19th president. Now that means that Ruby lived to be a part of 18 different presidential leaders and she also lived through the death of three of those presidents who died while in office and they were Harding, Roosevelt, and Kennedy. Quite a feat there. At the age of six she saw J. Edgar Hoover be appointed the director of the FBI. She was born six years before the first Grand Ole Opry was ever held, and she was born eight years before Charles Lindbergh made his first transatlantic flight. Ruby was, oh, question? Oh, okay, she says that she remembers well too when the Lindbergh baby was kidnapped, okay? Ruby was nine years old when Amelia Earhart became the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. In the 30s, she saw the first ever frozen food go on sale, and it was mixed vegetables packaged by Clarence Birdseye. <laughs> and as you all know, we still have the Birdseye Company today. She was 15 years old when Don G John Dillinger, excuse me, John Dillinger was killed, and she was 18 years old at the time of the Hindenburg disaster, killing 35 people and making an end to the airship travel. Ruby was 22 years old when America attacked Pearl Harbor and the U.S. entered World War II, and she was 26 when the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Only several days later, Japan surrendered during that war. There were two important events in her life when she was 31. One was the Korean War began, and the other one, and probably 
a very important one to many of us today, was that the comic strip Peanuts was published and Charlie Brown was born. <laughs> Ruby had to wait until she was 35 years old to be able to watch The Tonight Show. And I bet you watched it later than that, uh, Ruby, because a lot of us didn't have TVs that early. Right. But in 1954, NBC aired the first ever late night talk show, which was hosted by Steve Allen. Just talking with Ruby the other day, I was amazed at, you know, all the things. I could have been up here for hours telling you all that she has lived through, but I knew y'all wouldn't sit that long. So, <laughs> But I did want to share one thing with you when I was talking with Ruby. She uh, probably summed it all of it up better than I ever could by telling me this. And I, I had to write it down because I wanted to remember it. She said, I was born, running water took the place of a water bucket that was always empty. An outhouse became an in-house. A bathtub with jets took the place of the old metal wash tubs. A washing machine took the place of a rub board. A refrigerator took the place of a milk trough, and I had to even ask what's a milk trough. <laughs> I didn't know. Natural gas took the place of cow chips and wood, and air travel, and yes, even space travel, took the place of the covered wagon that brought her here to West Texas. It's been an amazing ride, hasn't it, Ruby? Do you have anything you'd like to say? She said it all. <laughs> she said I said it all. That's pretty typical for me, isn't it? Okay, I've said it all. At this time, Janice, will you come forward? At this time, we have a, a memory box <coughs> to present you. It has cards from your friends and family to show you how much we love you and appreciate you and admire you, Ruby. Thank you so much. And Ruby, that cross on it is made from some clothes pins that you donated to the center. Ruby's very generous. She's always giving us craft projects and we love it. We have one other gift for you. <laughs> this is Ruby's new walking cane. If you notice on the bottom, it has a tag that says, Old Lady Approaching. Okay? Every time you take a step, let me show you. Every time you take a step, it squeaks. So people will hear you coming. It does have its own horn. You want to toot it for us, Ruby? <laughs> and it also has magnifying glasses so you can take off and see real good and it has a very interesting pill bottle here and it says happy pills it keeps you slim prevents hot flashes and attracts young men <laughs> so we give you this and we hope you'll carry it proudly okay <laughs> Make, but then we'll uh, continue with the group. Uh, in case you don't know, but Sunday is when her celebration is going to be. That's when her birthday party is going to be at the uh, Desert Rose. So they're going to have a special celebration then. But we're going to celebrate today because we have a cake for her and we're going to serve that in a little bit. But we. Uh, we celebrate with you, Ruby, and we hope you have many more. Yep. Heritage Foundation in the Santa Fe Depot, and we're talking with a longtime resident of Muleshoe, Ruby Green. And Ruby has done many things in this community. Uh, one of them has been a longtime member of the Muleshoe Rebecca's, and uh, the Rebecca's have disbanded recently. Is that right, Ruby? True. After how many years of service? Sixty-six. 
66. No, will be 66 in October. In October. And so um, many, many years ago, you had a member that was called Grandma Snyder. And what was her name? Sarah Bell. Sarah Bell Snyder. And uh, she took on herself to uh, go out and sell a lot of advertising for this uh card table that we have sitting in front of us and how old was she at that time 74 hang on hang on a minute i have our minute book oh my goodness from what year 45 1945 and um so um sarah bell snyder past noble grand 74 and now, what is a uh, noble grand? What does that mean? Well, that'd be the same as a president. Uh-huh. She was the head of the, and this chapter, what was the number? 114. Rebecca, 114. And normally you'd have about how many uh, members? We've had as many as 140. Is that right? At one time? One time. And she, though, single-handedly sold door-to-door in the business section of Milshu ads for this card table. Now, the deal was that you would get how many card tables for the Rebecca's? I thought we were to get 16, but our minute said 24. Uh-huh. And so how much was each ad? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Don't know, but how much did she bring in? She brought in three hundred and twenty-five dollars. Three hundred and twenty. Uh huh. And how many ads did she sell? All of these. I don't know. I have never counted them. I think there's about forty-eight. Uh huh. And their business is here in Milshoe. In what year? Fifty. In nineteen fifty, and I think it was in August. That's a hot month to hit the pavement, wasn't it? I would think so. Yes, I sure would. And do you remember uh, when she was doing this? We didn't know it until she brought the money. Oh, she did it all on her. This was all a surprise to us. So, and she brought the money in Uh and told us what we were going to get, and we used these tables for years. And now tell me, how much did the Milshu Rebecca Lodge actually get from her uh, selling all of this? According to the minutes, we got $100. $100. And in 1950, that was a lot of money. <laughs> it would still be a lot of money as far as that's concerned. But but this day and age, no, it wouldn't be no money. Even the $325 wouldn't be no money. But no, we got uh, $100. From her now, tell me about this lady, Mrs. Grandma Snyder. She uh, did she come to Milshu just uh, right shortly before she did this, or was she a real pioneer? I think that she they came here in nineteen and eight. Nineteen oh eight. So she was a pi- the, uh, She was a pioneer. Wasn't she? I would think so. And what was her husband's name? I don't know. You don't have any idea. I never knew him. So he was long gone. And uh, so uh, she was a Rebecca for many years? Until she died. And what year did she die? 57. Did she have a family? She had two boys and a girl. And who were they? Frank, uh, Vernus and Frank and Mary. And I believe Mary became Miss Major Wood. Right. Now, what I recall about Mrs. Wood's history is she was either the first girl born in Bailey County or in Milshoe, one or the other. And so probably shortly after 1908 when they came here, I would think. I would, well, I think it probably was in 1908 when she was born. I'm not sure about that. Oh, uh-huh. So... But, and so she uh, probably uh, Mary Wood was born a uh, later in the year that the Snyders came. Probably so. Probably well, so. I've always heard that the Snyder family was a true pioneer family of the Milshu area. I always thought they were too. And uh, now y- you're a, a sort of a pioneer, aren't you? Uh, nearly. Uh, what year did you come here? 1922. 1922. So uh, tell us a little bit about the Rebecca's. What were some of the other things that while you were a member, how many years were you a member? I'm still a member. And how many? 60, will be 66 in October. So you were a charter member. I was. A, I'm the only charter member left. Is that right? How many charter members were there? 13. Wait, 
I got the book. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I don't. I'm going to have to count them. One, two, three, two, seven, eight, nine. They was ten by card and thirteen by initiation. Now, what does card mean? They were transferred from another lodge. Uh-huh. Now, tell me the charter members' names. Okay, uh, Faye Lambert, Ruby Green, Fern Davis, Dally Snyder, Anna Mae Province, Sylvia Wallman, Lois West, J.W. J. W. Bowen, George S. Province, Willis Bartley, C.W. Whalen, Paul Lambert, and J.J. J. Gross. Now, that, 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 that was that was a, those were initiated. Yes. Okay, the ones by card was Velma Howell, Alice Snyder, Elsie Chitwood, Pearl Greer, Opal Williams, Callie Williams, Sarah Bell Snyder, Frank Snyder, Eddie Chitwood, and Bernice Garth. Bernice Garth. Now, tell me about, there's a lot of Snyders in there. Frank and Allie were members previously. Uh-huh. Dally was initiated. Dally Snyder and George Province took the initiation degree, and the rest of us sat around. Now, uh, what about Allie Snyder? How was she related to Grandma? She was a daughter-in-law. A she, daughter-in-law. And she was, was her Frank's, Frank's wife. And the other one? Uh, Dally was Vernice's wife. I see. So. Now, is there any family members left? I know Bonnie Woods uh, Jackson, of course, is a granddaughter in Amarillo. Uh, Joy, Frank and Allie's daughter. They had two children, Charles and Joy. And Charles is gone, and Joy lives at Tucumcari. That's the only one that I definitely know. Uh, Dally and Vernice had one, and her name was Verna Ray. I don't know anything about what has happened to her. Uh Well, Mary had two children, a son and a daughter. One was a little older than I, and one was a year younger, the son was. Now, let's see if we can read some of these names uh, that Mrs. Grandma Snyder um, so adds to here um, in Milshu in 1950, summertime, August, when it was hot. Uh, read this side of it. Let me tell you, Milshu Funeral Home is the only, and it was a florist at that time. Uh-huh. That is one of two that's left. Is that right? Okay. Milshu Funeral Home, of course, now Alice. Yes. Beauvale Motor, Connell Oil, Lambert Cleaners, Milshu Funeral Home. Hornbrook Drilling, Hetherington Lumber, E.R. Hart and Company, Muleshoe Implement, Muleshoe Elevator, Weedabush Bush and Childers, Muleshoe Motor on this side. And over here, uh, Gulf, let's see, service station. Yeah, this is Gulf. Uh-huh. On this one is property of Muleshoe Rebecca's number 114. Is that right? <laughs> and, and you all really use these card tables. Oh, this is all we had to use for years. Uh-huh. We laid off of them. We've done everything. Uh-huh. This is Cashway Grocery and Market. And uh, the, by the way, the telephone number it looks like it's 109. This one's 232. Johnson and. Oh, go ahead. This one's 297J. Yes. Johnson and Pool Hardware and D.H. Sneed Supply, Lane Pumps, and Ferguson Tractors, King Brothers uh, Grain and Seed Company. Quality Seed, Mill Shoe Liquefied Gas Company, Firestone Bass, Firestone Store. So that would le- uh, later be changed to Harvey Bass Appliance, don't you think? I would think so, yes. Mill Shoe Cafe. Now, wonder who owned that. I don't say. So, what does that say right there? No, office called Bailey County. Office. Oldest cafe, oh. in Oldest cafe in Bailey County. <laughs> it was probably on Main Street, don't think, do you think? I would probably think so, yes. Hicks Tractor Company, Mule Shoe Jewelry. That probably was the Schusters. What do you think about that? Uh, probably so. Uh-huh. I'm not sure. Uh, Jack Schuster's mother, Sally. Uh, Gilbreth Feed and Seed Company. That would be Rufus Gilbreth. Uh, that is still here, but it's not. It's McCormick's. Yes, uh, right. And St. Clair's Department Store and Ray Griffiths Elevator, Cobbs. This is Harper Appliance. The Yellow Jacket. Uh-huh. I, never went, I never went to school on Meal Shoe Day. 
Mule Shoe Canyon Company. They used to get canned beans and tomatoes. Over uh, on the east side of town. Yeah. Essie, you know, I can't remember where it was exactly at. Well, it probably was around East 5th Street and maybe the, oh. There's nothing there anymore. I think, I think there's a little bit of slab on the ground cement, maybe. And that's about all. And it's probably in the, oh, say, 500 block. I would say that it'd be that far down, probably. So. What was the man who ran it? Can you remember his name? Uh, That's okay. That's fine. I can't. It's left me. Okay, this is S.E. Cone and Mule Shoe Locker. It's Pearson Meat now. And uh, Dameron Drug, uh-huh. Arnold Morris, uh, Valley... And Wallace Theater. Palace, Palace, pardon me. And they were both on Main Street, and uh, that was the Moeller family, and Hertha Walker, their daughter. That, that's Johnson Nix. And that was Buck Johnson's dad. Uh, um, yes. Buck Johnson's daddy. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Fred Johnson. Yes. Lane's shop. Yeah. Lawnmowers? Uh, that was Chet Lane. Okay, he, now, was he um, Phyllis Beaver's, Beaver's daddy. daddy? Yeah. Okay, that's Chet Lane. And does it say lawnmowers and what else, Gil Robert? And adjust, lawnmowers, ground, and adjusting. Lawnmower, lawnmowers, ground, and adjusting. <laughs> Went over in the corner is Evans Oil. And I can see Lambert Plumbing. That was Faye and, and Paul Lambert. And uh, Wilson and Sanders Lumber. Western Drug. Malone Milk. We used to get, we used to have a milk company here. Gerald's Cafe. Now, I think Gerald's Cafe was in, down, in downtown. Wasn't that Gerald Prebo? Yes. Mm-hmm. And Shader Rest. That was uh, where Wilson's wound up uh, running it. On the 84 out at the edge, west edge of Milshu. Now, wasn't Shady Rest uh, sort of a little neighborhood grocery store? And wasn't it run by all the Wilson's daddy? I don't know. I, th- I think so. Uh, the, after Bay and his wife started running it, I don't remember before then. Well, now, wait a minute. Uh, at one time... Um, uh, Freeman, can't think of his name, Evelyn and what was his name, Freeman, run it. That was Hugh Freeman's brother and his wife. So, but, uh, uh, did we miss any, any of We haven't got the bottom line. Oh, okay. And uh, Charles Leno, mm-hmm. and that was where the tables came from. And Crossroads Cafe, that was there. That was Butch and Rain Baker for years. And that was uh, not right at the Crossroads, but about a half a block off where the parking lot of Milshu State is it's today. Where Milshu State City. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Texas Machinery Company. I don't remember that at all. Texas Machinery. Uh-huh. And Dyer Hardware, that's been going along. CW Goss Service Station. That was Carol Goss. Yeah. And Evans all over there in the corner. Uh-huh. So it, it's been a, they've been a fun thing through the years. And, and what a memory, all of these. Uh, now, you said um, there were two businesses, not by the same name, Milshoe Floor, I mean, Milshoe, uh, uh, L- I mean, what does it say, Milshoe Funeral, Funeral Home and Florist. Hey, it was Henry Reed. They they had florists down there. Uh-huh. Mary Reed was yeah. the florist, yeah. right behind the funeral home. And then what was the other one that's still here? The Milshu Locker. Well, and also Gilbert Feed and Seed yeah. is McCormick. Uh huh. Only three that's still in existence under, and they're all under another name. Sure, and, and of course, uh, new ownership. Well, um, I guess that Milshu Locker was Jeanette Wagner's husband, though, wasn't it? 
Swagnett. Yes, Fanny. Swagnett. And you know, uh, Jeanette is going to be 99 August the 1st. Isn't that something? Well, I knew she was getting on up in years. Uh-huh. That, that's uh, my, At my age, I can tell that they're pretty close to, you know, a certain age. Uh-huh. So. And, and so now, what was your maiden name? Did you come here before you married? Oh, yeah. I was a Smith. And, and who were your parents? Tom and Callie Smith. And what did they do? They farmed. They were farmed. My daddy was commissioner in the 40s. Uh-huh. So, and but, what part of uh, Bailey County did you all live in? West. The west part. So now, what precinct was that? Two? Two. Precinct two, and what about? Uh, did you have brothers and sisters? I have two sisters and one brother, and they're all gone. Uh huh. And they came here also as children. Yes. But you didn't go to school here at all. No. Uh-huh. no. My brother went to school here, but <clears throat> we three girls never went to school a meal to a day. So where were you born? Hale County. In Hale County. And did your family come here from Hale County? Yes. So what did it look like when you all came here in 1922? Barren land. There was only two houses between us and Milshew. We, we were about 10 miles west, and there was two houses. And what were those houses? Well, where E.W. Bass lived, there was a two-story house, and there was rooms downstairs and upstairs. And uh, then uh, where Melvin Seymour's place is at, uh-huh. that place was there. And that was only two. Do you remember who lived in them? No. no. Johnson's lived uh, in this two-story house at one time. But the name, their name was Johnson. And now, was that Red and Randy's no. family? No. no, no relation. No, no. That was years. That was years before them. Okay. So... Well, who were some of the people here in 1922 when the Smiths came here? There was some people by the name of Holmes that was two miles north of us, and they lived in the same type of house. Uh-huh. And that was about it. Uh-huh. There was nobody. And so what? The ranch house out here uh-huh. was there. but The Milshu Ranch house. But you couldn't, you had to go come in town and then go back out there. There was no road coming in from the west to the ranch house. Is that right? The road was the, out here but Puckett Corner. That was the road to Clovis. And it went west and wound around. Was west. it paved? No. 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 It wound around through by West Camp and went into Farwell on the south side. Uh-huh. And, and was put in. have you ever seen a drier year? This no. In my lifetime. Uh-huh. What was the wettest time that you... 1941, boy, you knew that immediately. Uh, what happened in 1941, Ruby Smith Green? Oh, it rained and rained and rained until you couldn't even get in the field. So, but we made a fairly good, fairly good crop. Everything was dry land then. Uh-huh. Everything was no irrigation of any type. Well, no, there was some irrigation. In fact, uh, on my daddy's place was one among the first irrigation wells in the county. Probably the third or fourth one in Bailey County, uh-huh. and it it was a pit pump, a pit pump, uh huh. And I thought that was the deepest hole. Okay. It was probably eight or ten foot, but it was deep. Uh-huh. And then he had a stationary engine that, that it tunneled down, and it was belt driven. The pump was belt driven, and that big old stationary engine set in a lower place. And that's the way we pumped our water. Uh-huh. Now, uh, what about for the house? We had a house well, a windmill. You had a house well. And uh, did you have electricity and telephone? No, no, no. So what kind of light did you have at night? Kerosene. Kerosene lamps. And no telephones? No telephone. No radios? No radio. No TV? No TV. <laughs> no electronics of any kind. No. And I guess your mother had a rub board. We all had a rub board. I wore, washed on a rub board. And uh, so she had three children, was that right? Four children. Now, uh, who did you marry? Lusky Green. And so how did you meet him? They moved here in 29. And they came from where? Oklahoma. And so a lot of people came from Oklahoma, didn't they? Oh, yeah. It, 
Uh, Bailey County started settling up pretty much after 25. I see. By 30 and 30. In our Dust Bowl days, there was a lot of people here. And that was in the 30s. Now, tell us about the Dust Bowl. What was it really like uh, personally? You haven't seen no dirt now. Even our bad sandstorms as bad as the Dust Bowl. We'd get up of the morning, it'd be pretty sunshine. Now, we called them Kansas dusters. And you'd look in the north, and the horizon would be dirty looking. And you keep watching it, it just keep moving both ways. And then in two or three hours, it just cover us up. Mm-hmm. And it's blowed for two days and two nights. Straight. Uh-huh. And so you didn't have air conditioners, of course, of any type in your cars or your homes or any place. No, no. And what about fans? No. no. You don't even have, we didn't even know what a fan was. Yeah, this kind. <laughs> <laughs> a hand fan. And so now, uh, Ruby, what about your family, your children? How many children do you have? I have five. And who are they and where do they live today? Crispin and June and Tommy and Felicia and Noreen and JC all live here. Uh-huh. Charles and Gail live in Midland and Bertha is here and in Lubbock. Uh-huh. Right now she's in Lubbock. How many grandchildren do you have? Nine biological and four step. Don't ask any further than that. I can't count them. <laughs> but you've got... Uh, to count them this way to count them. <laughs> you've got more than that. Great, great grandkids. How wonderful. Okay. Now, I'm making count them. Uh, let's see, five. I may just have five. No, no. I don't know how many Doreen has got. I've got five biological. Uh-huh. But... Now, that, right, yes. and that's something. Now, tell me about, um, like, would you come to town every day? No. When, no, we got to come to town twice a year. Twice a year? We came to town just before school started and bought stuff for school and at Christmas time. Now, what would you buy for school? What kind of things? We bought material for Mama to make our clothes. And or, now notebook? No, we had tablets, uh-huh. and with lead pencils. And now, uh, where would you buy the material? Well, really, I don't remember anything about that. Because uh-huh. she was doing it, and you were the young girl. And I was just a young girl. Uh-huh. Uh, usually, we got to go to Clovis once a year, and that may have been. Where we were. And what would you go in to Clovis? Well, we finally had it, got a car. Uh, what year did you get the car? It was in the 20s sometime. Yeah, 20s. I don't remember just when. Now, wh- when you moved here, what did you move in? Uh, a wagon. Uh-huh. With and, a covered wagon. Yeah, a covered wagon. And so how long did it take you to come from, how many miles did you all move? It was from Hale Center, probably 70. Uh-huh. How long? I don't know. Did it seem long to you as a child? Probably not. I was too little. Because also, that's the way everybody traveled, do you think? I think so, uh-huh. yes. And so now, uh, what about um, your mother? Did she ever work outside the home? No, she just she never did work away from home. But, but she worked at home? All the time. She lived to be how old? 100. 100, one month. And uh, two days old. And uh, she was Callie Smith. Now, uh, have you ever worked outside the home? Oh, yes. Where have you worked? <laughs> All over this country. Well, where are some of the places that well, you nice work? I, well, the last place I worked right now is at the Chamber of Commerce. Uh-huh. I fill in down there when she's out. Uh-huh. And I worked at Littlefield at American Cotton Growers for six years. But actually... I was a painter and a paper hanger I see. for 30 years. Uh-huh. And that was, that's the reason I said I worked all over. Uh-huh. Right. So I'd go from one job to another. Now, I think one of the older, uh, would you call it, mercantile stores in Milshu that possibly your mother bought material was M.P. Smith. Uh, I remember the name of M.P. Smith, yeah, uh-huh. probably. And now, a grocery store. Did you come to the grocery store just twice? Yeah, much. Okay. No. Now, Mama would come into town. We had cows, and we milked cows and made butter, and she would bring it in probably once a week. But us kids never come in. Uh-huh. 
Uh-huh. But we're churn butter. She would sell it. Yes, yes. Who did she sell it to? She had her out here in town. It did she? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. People that would mold it, and she'd bring it into town. And Now, you said we would mold it. Explain what you mean. We churned it in a churn uh-huh. and then molded it in a mold. And it, that was by hand that you churned it? Oh, yes, uh-huh. yes. Did you have chickens? Yes. I guess everybody had chickens, didn't they? We had chickens and cows and hogs and horses. And a garden? Oh, yes, oh, yes. So really, most everything that you needed to eat was right there on your farm. Sure. Uh-huh. We killed our hogs. We killed her the coldest day of the year, they killed hogs. Why that? Well, the meat would help to preserve the meat better. I see. Then maybe two or three different ones would kill a beef and just use part of it. Uh-huh. And would hang it on the windmill and on some uh, stretchers and... Laid it down, cut some meat off, and put it back up. And you, you hung it on the windmill. Yeah. Uh-huh. We had to do that to keep the varmints off of it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And we had a milk trough. And our our well pumped water, and it went through this milk trough, and uh, that keep our milk from souring. That uh-huh. We kept our cream in there. Was it a good life? Oh, yeah. I really think we didn't know any different. It was, everybody was in the same boat we were. We were all happy. Now, what if somebody got sick? Well, you just worked it out at home. Yeah. No, we did have a doctor here. Did you? Do you remember his name? Matthews. Dr. Matthews, uh-huh. Back of the drugstore. Behind the drugstore. Now, wh- what was the name of the drugstore? I don't remember. Uh-huh. And so was the drugstore downtown on Main Street? Yeah, it, it was where they, uh, where Lindsay's had their jewelry. On the corner of what is now Avenue B and Main Street. Kind of Western drug. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, but I don't remember. I can't remember who was there. Leno was in there, the first one that I can, back the first one I can remember. Uh-huh. Julian Leno. Julian Leno was the pharmacist. Yes. Uh-huh. yes. And so uh, would you say that the doctor's office was sort of in what later became the hotel, or was the hotel actually there? No, I think that uh, the office was back in one of the rooms at the back part of the store. Of the drugstore, uh-huh. Now, there was a hotel here, or maybe two. Two. Two hotels. Skeptons? I don't remember what that other one was called. Uh-huh. But that other one, which actually you entered on Avenue B, right behind uh, Lindsay's, or the drugstore, Western Drug, later, or before Lindsay's, I guess, um, what Mrs. Major Wood uh, operated that and lived uh, there upstairs in the hotel. Right? That, that's right. Uh-huh. That's where I, I, she may have died there. I don't remember. I don't remember when she did die. I don't. No. Remember that either. Now, um, it is so nice that the Rebecca's gave this to the Milshu Heritage Foundation. Do you have any other card tables that have been given to uh, organizations here in town? There's one at the Senior Center. At the, at the Onita Wagner Senior Citizen Center. Right. Then I have one for sentimental reasons. Uh huh. So. Well, now, actually, the other card tables that was left, Joy wanted them. And that was for Frank- granddaughter. Yes. Uh-huh. So they went and to Joy Carey. Yeah, and took them, Carrie. Uh-huh. Well, that must have been some lady. Now, what was her full name? Sarah Bell Snyder. Sarah Bell Snyder. But she was known by everybody as Grandma Snyder. That's all I ever knew her by is Grandma. Is that right? Uh-huh. We all called her Grandma. What kind of a lady was she like? She was probably, oh, she'd crowd five foot, and she was a wiry little old lady. You just loved her to death. She just, she had a personality that everybody loved her. And everybody wanted to donate when she knocked on their door. Oh, she did this, I don't know how long it took her, but she walked and did all of this. She walked to all of the merchants. I believe there's 48 on here in 1950, and she was 74 at the time. And uh, they got these card tape. No, no, no. She was 74 in 45. Oh, she was. She was 
79. She was 70. She was nearly 80 then when she sold these ads to mill shoe merchants. And now we have this card table. Never would she would have ever thought that uh, so many years passed when she did this project by herself and surprised her fellow Rebecca members that uh, this would still be used and on display both here in Milshoe at the Onita Wagner Senior Citizen Center and also the Milshoe Heritage Foundation. Thank you, Ruby Green, for sharing with us. Well, I've, I've enjoyed my years as Rebecca. And this is memories of my years of a Rebecca. There's been a lot of fun in doing all of this through the years. We've done a lot of different things. Of course, you know, the Rebecca started the Thanksgiving dinner that now the Jenny Slippers does. Mm-hmm. So we've done a lot of stuff through the years and had fun doing it. And you're an active Jenny Slipper still. True, true. That's good. Thank you for your service to our community.